Five minutes after 10 o'clock, Kelly Hart in the studio. It really smells good in here right now. <laughs> Thanks. How you doing, Kelly? I'm wonderful. How are you? Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. I was surprised you came in today. I thought for sure this would be Christmas Eve Eve out and doing stuff with no, Lily no, no, no. and, and no. shopping. Are you done, done shopping? No, I'm not. I have a little bit more to do tonight, and then I'll be done. What's your favorite? What's your most Christmassy thing you've done so far? Oh, gosh. Um, oh, I don't know. I mean, I do all the Christmassy things. I don't know if one is necessary. Oh, you don't have one that sticks out? No. So I think to, uh, Saturday night is always like the m- most Christmassy thing that I do because that's I, – I go over to my mom and dad's. It's like tradition. We do our Christmas on Christmas Eve night. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Because now, you know, with me having a daughter my sister having little girls, it's important to be home you know, for Christmas morning. So we kind of do our thing over at my mom and dad's, and it's always a lot of fun. We were saying off before we went on the air, Robert and I went down to Disney Springs to see the the Christmas mm-hmm. stuff because the news article made it seem like 17 trees. You walk through this trail, and you discover all these trees, and they do have it. But Kelly, Ocala's got them beat. I'm telling you, the downtown Ocala area is way more magical then what Disney Springs pulled off. That was good to as hear. As far as as far as Christmassy mm-hmm. stuff. Yeah. I mean the cal- our, our downtown it is looks phenomenal. Beautiful. It's gorgeous, yeah. I mean, I am not a videographer. I just have a video camera. Mm-hmm. And and I posted a little video and I was just telling you we have a locally viral video with the horse and the carriage and the and the lights and the bell choir. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I think people really appreciate it, especially if you're from here and you're here all year and you drive through downtown. We already have a really lovely little quaint downtown, but they really do a great job. You know, it's magical to light it up, it? and I feel like every year, and I don't know, maybe I'm just paying more attention, or maybe I'm spending more time downtown. I'm not sure, but I feel like in the last few years, the number of lights has increased, and I mean, like the span. I wonder, like yeah, over, I don't know. you know, it, it originally I feel like well, it was just on the square, and now I feel like it's down roads, and it's and isn't isn't that connect the the combination of the tree and the skating rink together? Isn't that really I beautiful? I love that. Yeah, I love that. I know that we probably won't have that space for long with all of the hotel projects and yeah. stuff that are you know coming up. But I really love it being there. I, I hope that when they relocate it, that they'll find right. a way to here's keep an, it very opi- close. an opinion question. I think I know okay. your answer. Okay, the opinion. Okay, you see it in pictures. You say, oh my gosh, that is beautiful. I want to go and be there. Uh huh. When you are there, is it as magical as those pictures made it seem to be, or are you let down? When I go where? Downtown to- Ocala. Downtown? Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I don't, I don't want to say that I'm let down. I mean, obviously, video and pictures have a way of you know you're able to really kind of capture a, a particular angle especially the lights if you get right under it and it just looks like a blanket <laughs> of lights you know? i think it's just as magical but i think when, when i there. go down there i'm not i'm definitely not let down i feel yeah i, yeah, I think yeah. it's just beautiful yeah we, we went down there and uh just listened, listening to the whoever was singing and and uh it was just so beautiful and and you would see children there and mm-hmm. and uh, we, we we sat next to a lady and we were talking about the old drugstore that used to be on the corner and now i can't remember what it was called years and years mm-hmm. and years ago mm-hmm. probably before you were born i'm guessing and this lady remembered it too she didn't mm-hmm. look old enough to remember it so she's holding her age well and she said, yeah, we wouldn't come down here back in those days. You, would, you wouldn't be caught dead sitting in the square right. in the middle of the night like that. So Yeah. No, I remember my grandmother talking about the, a drugstore that was somewhere down there. And I think yeah. she worked a, um, a counter a- that had like milkshakes or something. Like oh, the drugstore really? had oh, nice. yeah, like little milkshakes. And I think that was her job one summer was to do wow. uh, milkshakes or something. So it's a lot of fun. I love being downtown. I mean, but there's re- I mean it, it almost has every single thing that you could want except for maybe like a drugstore type of a of a place right. but, but beyond right. that yeah, yeah. you know you can you yeah. can get a lot done so and, I, and it was funny I was telling you before the show that 
you enjoy it, you soak it all up, and it's so beautiful. And then when they take it down, it's, yeah, it, yeah, it yeah. seems so dull. I know that's the same case, you know, like when your Christmas tree is up in your living room all month long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so the lights are, you know, twinkling, and, and then you take it down, and suddenly oh, your living room's like, oh, man. It's wrong. You know, it, oh, it looks man. so different. Something's so. different. Yeah, like in this room, mm-hmm. look how different it looks now without the toys. The toys, I know. The toys were like a decoration. I right? know. But, yeah, yeah. I know. So, I don't know. Maybe because so much is happening downtown, they'll come up with a plan that maybe they can add some type of, um, you know, permanent lights, but that, strands see, or something. That's a debatable thing, too. Would it, would it take away from the Christmas time? Oh, I don't think the so. The specialness, no? No, because no. they have the icicles and the green and the red lights and all the other lights. And I just think that it's wonderful. I love when I visit other places and I enjoy their downtown and mm. they have it lit up or, you know, I yeah, just think yeah, it, yeah, yeah, it draws people to it. I love it. Want to take a phone call? Sure. Good morning. You're on with Kelly. Yes, uh, good morning, everybody, and uh, Merry Christmas to you all. Thank yeah, you. Merry Christmas. Hey, do you guys remember how nice Silver Springs used to light up at Christmas time, that walk through they had? Yes. Uh, it, was, it, it was really, really, very really something special. And uh, I knew whenever we had company, which we usually do uh, during the holiday time, uh, we always made sure to, to take a, a walk through there at night, and it was so beautifully lit up. And that, but uh, like everything else, or whatever, it's all it's all history. You know, it's all they got is the the park now as it is, and the, you know, the boat ride, and that's about it. Well, I'm. I mean, I don't know how much it costs to do all the lights. I can only assume the manpower and the lights themselves cost a lot of money. And now that it's mm. a state park, they probably just don't have the budget. Yeah. to do such a big production, which is sad because it was really beautiful, but... Uh, well, it, 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 it was something to look forward to, and I, I, I mean, so many times we took company over there, they just were so amazed, you know, walking mm-hmm. through all those lights and stuff, and, and then, of course, the big tree, and it was just a wonderful thing to, to see, but, uh, oh, well, it's just a happy memory, I guess. Yes, it was. Well, now you can take them downtown and put them on the horse and carriage. And yeah. And kind of partake in some of the stuff downtown. Yeah, do the downtown. They don't have the horse and carriage. They don't have the horse and carriage anymore. They do downtown. Oh, they do. Uh, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's you just during the holiday time, right? Right. Mm-hmm. Is that right? Yeah. I think so. They do they have the horse and carriage all year round? I'm not sure. I feel yeah. like I only see it <laughs> clomping around down. You know what they need to. You know what they need to do is to bring back that Ferris wheel this time of year. That'd be just great uh, going up there in the air and looking down at all the lights. <laughs> oh, yeah, I do remember the Ferris wheel. Yeah, they yeah, had yeah. that one year. Yeah. Oh, well, all these things are well, just good memories, I guess. <laughs> yes, well, thanks for calling and sharing that with us. Have a, have a great holiday. Thank you. Guys. You too. Did I did I share with you the uh, the the political? I don't want to get too political, but the thing that happened with the with Rainbow Springs and and maybe the same thing is with Silver Springs. Mm-hmm. I love both parks. I love the people who work at both parks. So I, I have to do that disclaimer because I don't want anything anybody to think we're mad at them. Right. But the state itself mandates that you can't have religious songs in the state parks because wow, is that right? I did not know. Yeah, and and because so we were asked, Rob and I were asked to do Christmas songs, and then then we were told. They have to be all secular, Frosty the Snowman, etc. You can't do, you know, Little Town of Bethlehem. Hmm. So, we, well, it's all instrumental. We said there are no words. Uh, nobody will hear us proclaiming anything. It's just right. instrumentals. Uh, you just gotta. So we said, no, nah, never mind. We were doing it for free anyway, so it's not sure. like we turned away a paycheck. But that is interesting. It seems yeah. like it infringes on your freedoms. Everybody's got an issue, right? But yeah, it's a state park, a, and that's why. I guess so. So could you wear like a religious T-shirt into a state park, or would they? Make yeah, you? yeah. But if you are there, I, I guess. Oh, because we would be representing the park as musicians that they invited. Okay. I think okay. if we just showed up and okay. played, I don't think anybody would care. I see. I see what I see. Kind of what they're yeah, saying. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's unfortunate. So you should just go set up and play on your own. Yeah. How yeah. about that? But see, now, now this is this is a, a testament to Ocala's fortitude. Is it a good word, fortitude? Sure. I mean, they have the. Uh, oh, I thought that was him. We have the uh, the menorah down there for for the Hanukkah. So we're allowed to. I don't think we have a. We don't have any nativity scene, do we downtown? I don't. Not think downtown. So. No, there is a living nativity scene at one of the churches, but the not churches. Downtown. Yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. But I mean, uh, on public property, the the town mm-hmm. says so we're we're okay with this. We're I okay think it's with fantastic. the menorah. Yeah, come I on. I think that it, I think it's fantastic. I think I I love how our downtown tries to be as diverse as as possible. Um, I think our mayor has been really supportive. 
yeah. of the diversity. I talked to yeah. him one time, you know, when the atheists were trying to sue him because they had the prayer right. vigil, right, right, Christian, right. whatever, you know, and right. he said, he, you know, he said, people will call and be so upset with me. Well, why didn't you do this? And why didn't you do this? And he said, no one's asked. All you have to do is ask. And it makes sense. Yeah, people yeah, get yeah. mad because they see certain types of events happening and not other types of events happening. But, you know, it's oh, because mayor. no one has called he, and asked, may I set up a, you know, whatever downtown. He's on, really on been square. inclusive in, in everything. I think so. We we went to an Upshurnish. Have you ever gone to an Upshurnish? No. It's a new word for me. Do you know what it is? No. It's a, a little Jewish boy. He's the son of uh, Rabbi Hecht. Okay. They don't cut their hair until they're two years old or whatever. So they look at little girls. Okay. Okay. So the uh, cutting of the hair is a, is a Jewish uh, tradition or whatever. For the, so the boy's first haircut is called an upshurnish, and everybody gets to clip a piece. And then what do you do with it? I don't know. An upshurnish? Robin, do you remember? Yeah, I don't know if hmm. I'm saying it right or not. But but anyways, the mayor, uh, the mayor was there. Really? Yes. Good for him. Yeah. I never heard of that, so I just learned something. Yeah, he made a little speech, and he was there. I think he clipped the hair, and Robin clipped the hair. Fantastic. I didn't because I was doing the video. But <laughs> <laughs> well, that's very interesting. No, I had not heard of that. I and, and I think it's great that there's so many so many different things that go on you know, in our city. In fact, that's why in January we just finished um, – and we're putting together now the layout for the January issue, of course. And one of the things that we do every single year in January is our State of the City editorial, which basically is a recap of all the things or a majority of the things that have happened in 2016, the major things, and then a forecast of what to expect in 2017. And so it's always fun because I get to call on these city officials and talk to them about the progress of things like for example the you know parking garage now that it's complete are people using it right. you know how many cars do they expect a day how many people are actually have you parking parked in it there? yet yeah i have yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah now i've parked in it a few times so it's just a lot of fun and then some of the things that are happening and i think i think that's probably one of my favorite uh, editorial pieces throughout the year because it does give me a, a genuine appreciation after sitting down and talking to city officials when they talk about how many months right. it took to develop the project and then construct the project and complete it yeah. and all of the consultations and planning that goes into these projects. Do you have a, a call out for writers to give you their thoughts about what Ocala would be in the future? Wasn't there something like that this year? There was a, w what we did was we asked for, we had kind of had like a contest where I gave a couple different topics and people could pick what they they wanted and submit a piece of editorial. In fact, one of the uh, the one that we'll be publishing will be published in January as well, called Fire Over Ocala, oh, really? and it talks. It's a historical piece about a fire that happened and destroyed parts of Ocala. And oh, okay. Yeah, it's a really unique. I'm just curious piece. what people see in the future for Ocala and and uh, the people who are close sure. to it, the pe the decision makers, as well as the outsiders right. or anybody else who may have contributed to that. Well, in talking to our city officials, so many of them referenced the 2035 um, plan. Right, right, right. And, right. you know, I kept hearing that and I kept thinking, you know, my gosh, you know, it's 2000. 17 almost yeah and we have a plan our city is has a plan through you that know goes to 2035. 2035 wow so there's still a lot but it takes a lot of work i mean it takes a lot of planning i'll be 80. and you hear oh, i don't even want to i'll be 80. don't think about it because then i'll think about it and then i'll think about how old lily will be and then that will make me really sad so don't do that let's not do that let's just think about the plan not our ages that's not that far away Ugh, i know i know but you won't be 80 at least. no i won't be 80 no <laughs> well, but i'll still be a heck of a lot older <laughs> so i don't want to think about that oh my god uh, but it was exciting because there are so many plans and, and we don't think about i don't think we appreciate the planning that goes into it we just hear you know uh, uh maybe a half cent tax increase to fix this or fix that and we all go oh more taxes but then nah, it's really point. important to know really that point, things yeah. are really happening. So um, that'll be something to look forward to in the January issue because there is a lot of stuff that happened in 2016. I mean, we really had a very productive year. Yeah. Very. Yeah. And it, almost everything that started early in 2016 is done. Yeah. A lot of the they stuff that they were working a lot. on. Yeah. Yeah. They accomplished a lot. I mean, when you're driving now, I love that the magazine is kind of like, you know, right there in the historic district and right on the cusp of downtown right, right, because right. it gives me an opportunity to drive through there 
I mean, every single day. Right, right, right. And so to watch all the progress and everything, and now you drive through there and you've got your loft apartments, you know, and then you've got your right. parking garage. And I love the facade they did on the parking garage. Me too. I've seen Me some too. that are like really like, I think unattractive. Linda, I think Linda Marks shared the video we did for the horse in front of the, the garage. She probably did. Yeah. She That's, probably it's did. It's pretty too. And it's so pretty. And if you're a photographer, you'll probably get a really good picture like your guys, you know. Uh, I'm just... <clears throat> yeah. I'm not even an amateur. I'm less than an amateur. So I, I just had a, right. like a camera you would take to a theme park and just, you know... Well, it, it definitely gets you very excited. And I hope that this article in January will get people very excited about the growth. I mean, downtown is just... It's, I mean, it's just kind of like a, a domino effect. I mean, it's really growing outward and is stretching across 40 yeah. and so much is happening and yeah. we have so much and to now, look forward and now, to and now with Starbucks going down to Pine and that, that I love that that corner and I guess it's up, up in the gr we don't know what that's going to be yet uh, I know we talked about it last week I think it's the Jimmy John's I, I don't know why I think that but no I no no not that corner I mean the, the other one the one that they were saying they wanted a uh, oh the gas station right which right. I guess they turned down that I idea. guess they did yeah. but I don't know if we'll, if that's the last of that who knows but whatever is going to be there... Whatever it is, it'll be growth. It's so going it'll be to amazing. be another... For, if you were around long enough, you remember when the whole downtown area looked blighted like that. Nobody went down to any, for anything other than maybe that one mm -hmm. drugstore that was still there at that time. Right. And, and Gawson Sons, I believe, was, has been there through the whole thing. Yeah, they probably know so, so much yeah, about the growth down there they've because seen they've been it, there so long. Yeah, but it's beautiful now. And, uh, and thank goodness we have leaders who are going to put their hats on and make sure it stays beautiful yeah 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 and in talking to them they're so passionate about it you know i mean i had them on the phone and i thought oh my gosh you know i've got to call all these different people and talk to them about all these projects and get information and they're so busy and i'm sure they're not gonna want to make time to you know talk to me but they because these are all different projects and it's like their baby yeah, yeah. they were so enthusiastic about it. i mean some of them i was on the phone i you know i told them it'll just be a few minutes but I me mean, we're chatting so much because you can just tell they're so enthusiastic right, about these right, projects right, yeah. they understand because they're in the middle of it what it means to ocala for mm -hmm. our growth our economic you know, growth and even for tourism i mean you know there's a lot of tourism we have a lot of events that bring people from all over the world i mean hits for example i mean people from yeah, all, yeah, yeah. athletes from the world well it's interesting how th the theme park tourist thing turned out not to be necessary we were all upset because our theme park went away silver springs mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it doesn't seem to matter people are still coming to visit so sure sure they're still coming there's, there are visit. other there's, reasons there's to visit so many other i reasons. would visit a town just because it's a great town i do yeah. this a lot right you know and i mean the park is still open i mean there are still opportunities I, hey, to I enjoy love silver springs. the park right but you're right about in, in in commenting on why the lights are probably not there it's probably a money thing and i'm sure i mean it's not it's just a, a it's park. not just a couple guys up there volunteering and stringing lights they had in the closet i mean yeah, lights right. are expensive and you have to use really good quality ones for a production like that and it's just really expensive We'll take a little break, okay. and we'll be right back. Right. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. On this Friday, intervals of clouds and sun with a high of 76 to 80. Partly cloudy and mild Friday night, lows in the upper 50s inland, mid-60s along the coast. For Saturday, partly sunny and very warm. There can be a shower along the coast, high 80 to 84. And on Christmas Day, times of sun and clouds and quite warm with a chance of an afternoon shower, high 79 to 83. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Joe Lundberg. Hi, I'm Seth with AA Lock, Dock, and Security. Have you ever thought about the locks or security on your house or business? Have you ever wondered why the keys to your new car cost so much? Well, at AA Lock, Dock, and Security, we can help with securing your valuables. We can even replace those expensive transponder keys. We can give you the knowledge that no one else will. Call AA Lock, Dock, and Security at 867-1965. That's 867-1965. Hi, I'm Leah Caruso with Strive Rehabilitation, inviting you to join me Thursday at 11 a.m. for Health Matters. Ocala Health and Strive have teamed up to bring you the latest information on good health services available to you right here at home. This vital information will help you make informed decisions about your health. So don't forget to join me here at 11 a.m. Thursday. It's news you can use from Ocala Health, Strive, and your friends here at WOCA. 
Hospice of Marion County has an urgent need for volunteers to share a conversation with someone, run errands, hold someone's hand. All you need is a willingness to help others. Our volunteers believe the blessings they receive far exceed the services they offer. Will you consider serving, caring, and making a difference? Call today, 873-7441. Hospice of Marion County, making more moments of life possible. 25 minutes after 10 o'clock. Kelly Hart is here. This is Ocala Magazine Radio. Kelly, of course, with Ocala Magazine. And uh, yeah, it, it is a, a place to go. It, it is a place to share Ocala, the magazine itself. You can take or send or whatever with somebody who doesn't live here and say, this is Ocala. And, and the magazine does a really good job of showing right. Ocala. So. And so that's what we try to do. I mean, obviously, it's a local magazine. And so there's all kinds of things that we can be talking about, even you know national and, and world topics. But we make sure that there's some type of a local tie. And we write it in a way that, A, we want the editorial to be relevant for quite some time. You know, I, I got called for jury duty on Monday. I was sitting in this room, and I noticed uh, there was a couple Ocala magazines January of this year, like uh-huh. so 2016. Yeah, they're old in there. I right? know. They're old <laughs> and they were in there, but people are bored. And I saw, uh, you know, a couple people pick them up and lay them down and someone else pick it up. And of course, I'm watching to see what things are they looking at, where are they stopping. <laughs> but I thought, how cool that this magazine, now almost a, a complete year old, is still being passed around and people are reading it because the way that we write our, el- our editorial is that we try to keep it relevant so that if someone picks it up a month from now or six months from now, they're still being educated on something. It's not necessarily news or old news they've already heard. It's information that can still be uh-huh, important uh-huh. and relevant because we do want the books so to stick So did you pick for jury duty? No. Yeah. Yes. No, <laughs> no, I didn't. It was, a, it was the biggest waste of my day ever, and that's not to insult our system. It's just to say I needed to be working. So, I don't know. Um, I don't know. But, but I think for our advertisers, the cool thing is, is I'm thinking all the advertisers that happen to be in that January issue are still being seen. That's right. They're yes. still being seen a year right. later. Right. So that's why it's important. The way that we plan our editorial is to try and keep everything as current as we can so that they stick around and they do they do stick around and that's one of the reasons that state of the city is such an awesome piece of editorial um especially you know if i was a realtor and someone were considering moving here i would grab that january issue and i would make sure that my potential clients saw you know this particular ocala magazine because if they're flipping through it and they're thinking wow we're going to have this wetlands project and we're going to have a new park and a big you know you know hotel that might persuade them to yeah, yeah. To pick yeah. to live here over maybe another option. So, you know, when we write, we 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 have a a plan in mind. And you know, um, they would talk. There was talk. I don't want to say they because I don't know who they would be. I, I hate to say they if I don't know who they are. Right. But there was talk uh, about this being a destination for the eco tourist. Do you remember this? Mm-hmm. And we saw witness to this. We went to Silver Springs, and there was a guy in a kayak, and he got out of his kayak, and he was from like Minnesota or something. Yeah. So he came here just to ride his with his family. They were in kayaks also. And and, and um, there's an example right there. Well, I mean, take a look around. I mean, look right now outside the window, and it's a couple days before Christmas. And the weather's nice. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Our, our, our plants are still green. Some things are still blooming. And then you have people up north that are you know, scraping her, slush off sn- of their... Snowstorm head. Europa. Right. So, I mean, think one. about yeah, it. Yeah. This is a perfect, I mean, a wonderful place to live. I mean, I can't imagine. Have you, by the way, have you walked on the new boardwalk at Silver Springs? No. Oh I my gosh! Not, not. You got to take that walk. It's okay. so pretty, especially when it goes over some of that blue water in the, on the river. That if you, if, if you know where I'm talking about, when you go first, yeah. go in. When you go to the right, like you used to go to the uh, uh, what do you call the the reptile area? Yeah, it was a reptile yeah. um, attraction. But yeah. now it goes sort of kind of to the back, and it's elevated off the ground, so you don't have any alligators coming up at you. So. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, I think that's the same. I think that's the boardwalk that when you're kayaking, you kayak under it. As soon as you launch, you go. Man, uh, maybe. You go under it, and maybe. then it opens up yeah. over by the... Have you kayaked? I have, yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. We've so, done, yeah, you probably... We've right. gone kayaking. We did the midnight kayak tour over... Did you really? The, I don't want to say midnight, oh but it was gosh. pretty late. Yeah, yeah. It was dark. I'll tell you that much. There was no was light outside. scary? Yeah. Yeah, it was scary. Did you see any I'm not going to lie. No, I mean, you couldn't see anything, <laughs> which made it super scary. Did you have a flashlight or anything? Well, we did have a flashlight, but you know, I mean... 
sometimes it's you don't want to know what what's out there next to you. So. <laughs> right, right, right. But we want to encourage everybody to uh, like us on Facebook. You know, we're always making announcements and posting contest opportunities, giveaways, and you know try to have a lot of fun on Facebook so make sure that you like us on Facebook um, the January issue will be out before you know it and in the meanwhile everyone should have a very Merry Christmas Merry Christmas to you too thank you thank you we will be right back thanks so much why don't you love me like I know you could Fox News Radio. I'm Lillian Wu. It goes to the Italian police. The voice of a translator for a grateful German chancellor after the suspected Berlin attacker is killed in Italy. Angela Merkel saying many more questions do remain about Anis Omri, the Tunisian man who killed 12 people in a truck attack, according to police. Omri actually started out uh, yesterday in Chambéry, France, and then he took a train to Turin, Italy, finally to Milan Central Station at which point he shifted to a northeastern suburb of Milan where he was picked up uh, at 3 o'clock in the morning and ultimately shot. Fox's Amy Kellogg, hijackers of a plane diverted to Malta, now in custody, according to authorities in Malta. And a suspect in the road raid shooting death of a little boy in Little Rock, Arkansas, has been arrested. Fox News, we report, you decide. This is the place with the helpful hardware, folks. Need last-minute gifts? Don't miss the giant stocking sale this Friday and Saturday at your local Ace. Buy an oversized stocking for $5 and save 20% on almost anything that fits inside. Ace is the place where you're excited to get a sock for Christmas. A giant sock filled with gifts. Offer valid at participating stores December 23rd and 24th only on regular price items that fit inside the 42-inch stocking. One per customer. Conditions and exclusions apply. See store for details. Welcome to Geico's Motorcycle Meanderings. Oh man, this is great. I sure saved a lot of money by switching to Geico. I scored some big savings and now I can use their mobile app 24-7 for all sorts of stuff. Life just makes sense now. What doesn't make sense is if a highway splits, it's a fork in the road, then wouldn't the long straight stretch be a knife in the road? And then wouldn't a cul-de-sac be a spoon in the road? What would a spork be? Geico Motorcycle. Savings that make sense. Buying and selling? Then you know about OcalaForSale.com, Marion County's internet marketplace. But there's something you might not know. I'm Michael Warren, president of USA for Sale. We created Ocala for Sale in 1998 with a passion to connect buyers and sellers and to help local businesses reach shoppers online. On Ocala for Sale, you're just a click away from thousands of deals for real estate, rentals, cars, furniture, appliances, horses, pets, and more. Looking for a job? Our help wanted section is booming. Shopping the villages and beyond? Now you'll find great deals on villages for sale as well as our new statewide class.